Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this brief online video about how OrgSync helps student organizations to manage their member base more effectively. We provide a variety of tools to every group so they can communicate both internally within their organization and with the university administration as a whole. It's set up kind of like Facebook. Every student has their account and profile. So right now, I'm logged in as a student, and I can look at everything from my sorority to my residence halls or my student government. Jump between the different organizations that I've already joined. When I click on one of them, I'm going to come in here, and I'll get a more in-depth look at that organization. See some upcoming events, polls, discussion, news, all the relevant information on this organization on the home portal. On the side, this is my organizational menu bar where I can control and manage the different aspects of my organization. And up top is my personal menu with my message center and calendar and things like that. Under people, there's a list of all the different directories within the organization. Organizations are unlimited in the number of directories that they have, so I can create additional ones, and I can even have as many users in one of the directories as I want. So when my students graduate, don't kick them out of my boxing club. Move them from student status to an alumni status. When I click on one of these directories, I'm going to come in here and get a more in-depth look at their profile view. I'll get a picture, phone, email, contact information on all of my members. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a members only site, so members do have to log in to have access. So that's how we control who has access to the information. When I click on lists, I can get a list view of all the members in that group. I have the officers up top and all the members below it. Typically the way that it's set up is the president and the staff advisor are administrators in their portal, but then they can delegate out tasks to other officers, so it's not one person's shoulders that everything rests on. I can download an Excel roster of all the members in my organization so I can have an accurate head count whenever I need it. Committees. Organizations can manage and maintain all their committees from in here. I can create additional committees or add users to a committee. When I add a user to a committee, what I'm really doing is giving them an additional privilege. So that everybody I put into this Judicial Affairs Committee, they can trade pictures, documents, files, whatever they want, but only the users that I give access to can see that information. Calendar. Calendar is a crucial part of an organization. It's how its members stay informed. I can come in here and get a two-month glancing view, click on an individual event or a meeting, get a little pop-up window. It's going to have a name, a title, and a brief description of the event. Under tools, we have a list of all the different tools and modules that we offer for organizations. They can use the events and the meetings modules to populate their calendar so that they don't need an IT person. The underlying thing is that organizations that don't have an IT person don't aren't missing out because they're lacking that position. They can still go ahead and keep their calendar and events and everyone informed from one place. When I come into my events module, I can see that everything's broken up into different categories. I have my community service, my executive, or my conferences down here. Create as many categories as you want or go in and create a new event. When I create the event, decide which category type the event falls on. Click the calendar to populate the date, put a description and an address, but what's really important is this permission-based access at the bottom. This is where I can decide as an administrator who do I want to have access to this particular event that I'm creating. If I decide only my social committee needs to be informed of it, I can click just their box. But if I want the students and my alumni to be aware, I can allow them also to receive this event on their calendar. Whenever I click on everyone public, it does two different things. One, we can host public websites for each and every organization. And what that's going to do is it put this event automatically onto their public site. So again, it eliminates the requirement to have an IT person so they can keep it up to date. The second thing that it does is it allows other students on campus that aren't even a member of my organization to be able to pull up this shared event and participate if they're interested. So if I run the baking club on campus and I want to promote my bake club, I can even share it with other members so that I can have a higher turnout at my event. If I need a more in-depth look at a particular event, go next to the event name and click on its details. Come in here and get a brief description of the event. A complete RSVP list of all the members that are going to attend the event. So if you were limited on seating or food or something like that, it's easy to get an accurate head count of who's going to be there. I even put my address into this event so that whenever I click get directions, it's going to pull up a Google map from my home address to where an event's being held to help those people from out of town quickly find their way to where they're headed. 
One thing to keep in mind is that we are looking at this as an administrator. That's why I have all of these edit and delete and change types options, something that a regular student wouldn't have at their ability. Also as an administrator, I could forcibly add or remove someone from an event. When I add you to an event, you're going to get a message internally, and you'll get a note on your personal calendar to keep you reminded of it. Organizations that need to track their community service and member involvement, when they close off the event, they're given a tracker. They can come in here, assign hours to individual members. It's defaulting to three hours because when I created the event, I projected it should take about three hours to accomplish. But after I've gone through and assigned hours to all of my members, I click Submit, and all that information is going to be tracked on my timesheet. This shows me all the different account groups within my organization and how active its members have been. If I need a more in-depth look at, say, Drew Blair here, click on his details, and I'm going to get by date, by event, how many hours of credit that he has. A student, they can even use this manual entry box at the bottom to submit hours that, as an administrator, I could either approve or deny to give them credit if I wanted to. If I jump back into our events module, I can actually export an Excel file that's going to have all that information in one place for me. So whenever I come in and look at this, all the different tabs at the bottom are going to be the different event categories that I created. Whenever I expand these columns, you can see that each column is the information that I requested, and the row is going to be the number of hours from the student. Meetings. Meetings are a little bit different than events. We don't track hours, you track attendance. So when I click on a meeting's details, I can come in here and have a full attendance tracker. Organizations typically just have their secretary sit down front and he can mark everybody's absent or present. And then they have an instant online record of their members' involvement at the meeting. All of our events and meetings download directly into Outlook or iCal, so it's easy to keep your personal calendar up to date, even with reminders. When I go back into my meetings module, I can pull up this attendance grid. This is going to show me everybody within the organization by date, how active they've been, with cumulative totals on the right, so I have an accurate headcount from my meetings. And a really exciting fun one is a text messaging. Students always check their cell phone more often than they check their email. So it's great for organizations to get that quick update out. A meeting was canceled or an event was arranged out, quickly notify their members. All of our tools are really built out of a needs basis. We all ran organizations in school. We wanted to solve a lot of the communication problems that groups were having. One of those that we really needed to solve was the polls, collect feedback, get men members interacting. You know, be able to know, did my members like that meeting we had last night? What kind of food do you all want to have at our meeting next week? You know, get them to be involved. Organizations could even put their officer elections online. Come in here, click on new, put a name to your poll. When does it start? When is it over? What options do you want to vote about? Who do I want to have participate in my poll? Submit it and you just put a poll online. If it is an officer elections, I highly recommend that we hide the poll results until the closing date. And when we do that, it shows up like this one down here where the results are hidden because it's a formal poll. While below above it, I can see the, more, the results because it's a more informal questionnaire. Probably one of the more powerful modules is our forms capability. It's a great way to create an entirely paperless office. So any kind of paper document that you currently receive either from the students themselves or from the organization can be turned into a web application that they can fill out online and you can download a copy whenever you need one. So I can come in here, the different pages of my forms, and say I want to design the layout of my page. I can collect information from my members with checkboxes, radio buttons, drop-down menus, however you want to collect the data from your students. What's important is how easy it is. So say you want to add a new element to your form. Come in here, let's do another drop-down menu. To put in one choice per line, and when I submit it, it's going to automatically have generated my drop-down box so my students could log in and submit their response to. I can move this up or down to make the layout look however I want. So now I've built my form. My students have logged in and submitted their information. If I go back to the forms module, I can actually download their submissions. This one happened to be an application, so I set up an evaluation committee to accept or defer their application. And being an administrator, I can even go in and score it if I want. I can click on an individual student's name and download a PDF copy of their submission. Or even better, come up here to download and export the entire thing into one large Excel document. Instead of having 30 pages of an application to go through, export it into one Excel file where you can sort, filter, do whatever you want. The different pages that are listed out at the bottom as different tabs. When I expand these columns, you can see that the column is the information you've requested from the student, and the row is going to be the student submission, so it's really easy to build a full database out of it. 
contact books. There's a huge problem every year when officers graduate because they take their wealth of knowledge with them. Incoming officers frequently have to reinvent the wheel, and sometimes organizations are fall apart because they're not able to accomplish their goals. We can come in here and have an online Rolodex, or I can list, list out all the guest speakers that we've worked with in the past. Click on entries, view all their contact information, phone, email, address, stuff like that. But what's really important is that I can even see what other officers or other members have said about this individual so that I can decide if I do or don't want to build a relationship with them. Everything is really off of a privilege base, so if I go back into my contact books, I can decide that my community service contact can be viewable to everybody while I'm going to restrict my guest speakers to just my officers. I can control who has access to what information within my portal, all based on which account group we put them in. Treasury, we want to give the treasurer all the tools that they need to manage the treasury aspect of their organization. They can have as many different ledgers and checkbooks as they want. Come in here and on a monthly basis track all of the money coming in and the money going out. They can even use this manual entry box at the bottom to submit records to make sure things are kept up to date. For those organizations that collect dues, we want to facilitate even with that. So we accept Visa, MasterCard, and Discover directly into the website. It's a great way for them to accept their credit cards or donations directly online, and then we direct deposit the money back into the organization's account every other Friday. The way that it's set up is as an administrator, I can come in here, click on details, and see the payment history of any one of my members. I get by date and amount. If I give me cash or check, I can make that notation in here in order to keep my books up to date. If I were just a student, I would log in and see Casey's dues up top, click on details, and I can see my personal payment history, even that I have an outstanding invoice where I can click now and it brings me to a payment screen to submit my information. For those organizations that don't collect dues, frequently they need to be able to invoice their members for trips or event registrations and things like that. So again, they can invoice their members, members can pay online, and all the financial transactions through the websites tracked on the bank. It's going to show all of the money coming in and going out. Remit pending means we haven't released those funds, so the organization can still be expecting that money. Donations, perhaps, is the best thing about us being able to accept credit card on behalf of an organization. When their students graduate, we didn't kick them out. We moved them into an alumni status, and now we're going to keep them informed with events and news and meetings and stuff like that. So it allows an organization to hit up their own alumni for direct donations back to their organizations. Pictures and files, groups can have as many different pictures and files as they want to. On the files, they can be broken up into different folders depending on who you want to have access to what. My budget information, I want to restrict that to just my exec board. While my new member application, let's allow anyone to view that document. A store, organizations can come in and sell anything from bumper stickers to t-shirts. Add items to their cart and go through a checkout process similar to that of the dues collection. Probably the most important thing about the store is the report capability. Come in here and get a full vendor report. That way I know for the ASGA conference shirt design, I need to have three size small and three size mediums made so I know exactly which kind of shirts to have manufactured. Even more important, when as a president, I get a box of 150 t-shirts back, I know that Sammy Lane ordered a size small and a size medium so that I know the right shirts go back to the right people. Because frequently, the leaders of organizations end up with the, all the extra larges or the wrong size because they don't have an accurate head count of who received what shirt, and we're really trying to prevent that. Earlier, I mentioned that we can help organizations host a public website. We, they can take a site that they currently have or we can design templates for them. The way that it's set up is they, they could go to any URL they want, so studentgovernment.com or basketweaving.org, whatever address they want. It's going to bring them into our, onto the public side. Their members could log in from this public side and get kicked into OrgSync. Not only is it going to be hosted with OrgSync but integrated. So if I go and view my calendar, it's going to show me all of the events that as an administrator I decided to share publicly. Again, this allows organizations that don't have an IT person to always have a site that's up to date and able to send it out to the masses to keep everybody informed. Not only can I keep my calendar up to date automatically, but I can customize my site when I want to. If I go back into OrgSync and I come next to my calendar here, click on Edit. It brings up a rich text editor where I can come in here, type whatever I want, put pictures, bold, color, font, whatever. When I click Submit, it automatically does all the HTML coding for me. So when I go back to my public side, I can refresh it, and it's going to show me whatever changes I've made. It allows even the Basket Weaving Club to put out new promotional stuff on their website to keep everybody informed. 
settings. This is an administrative privilege where administrators can come in and change whatever, many different aspects of their organization. Each group is going to have a custom banner or header up top, and this is where they can upload that file. G account groups, each organization can have as many of these different account groups. They can come in here, change the titles of those that are there, or create new ones. In we want to keep these organizations a closed gated community so new members are required to have a password before they're able to join and this is where as an administrator I can change the required password. Probably one of the more important things is the group permissions. This is where I can change each and every one of my account groups and what permissions they have in each and every one of the modules. Let's take the store for example. I got my, my students over here. I want to allow them to be able to view the store. While my new accounts, I'm going to go ahead and disable the store from them so that they don't have access to it. It's a long list because we do a lot of stuff, but it's a one-time setup. Come in here, decide what you want different aspects of your organization to be able to do, and then you can toggle or change those whenever you want to. So these are all the different tools and modules that we've offered for organizations to make it easier for them to communicate internally within their groups and with their administration as a whole. There's even an umbrella portal that goes up over this organization that allows the umbrella to push out information to all the subordinate groups. And for more information or to see about how we can sign up for a webinar, please visit www.orgsync.com slash webinar and you can sign up for a full presentation that takes about an hour and you can get an in-depth in -depth analysis and even ask questions if you have any. I do appreciate your time and I appreciate you looking at OrgSync. Thanks. Bye-bye.